Hi everyone. So today I'm going to go over the code I provided you guys with in the submit files to ChatGPT video. I see a number of you have been having issues just trying to replicate the code. So hopefully this video can help you guys out. And also for those that don't want to go through the process of building this plugin, you can just head over to the Chrome Web Store and look for ChatGPT file uploader extension. This plugin has the ability to upload Excel files, Word files, PDF files, etc. Um, and it's completely free. So anyway, let's just get into it. So you can find the following prompt in the description below. In the first part, we're just asking ChatGPT to use the selector I provided here. And all that's doing is just asking ChatGPT to take the submit file button and the uh, progress bar and place it underneath this selector. Then we go on and provide ChatGPT with a, the submit conversation code so that we can ensure that it submits the information properly. And then at the bottom, it says, uh, here's the code I need to edit. Please provide the full updated code. And the code that I'm referring to is just the prompt that I provided in the previous video. But again, you can find the entire prompt in the description below. Okay, so our code has completed. So now let's just copy the code. And now let's right click, select inspect, and let's head over to the console area and let's paste the code and hit enter. So there's our button and the progress bar. We can deal with the way it looks later. So now I'm going to test to see if it works and I'm gonna click on the button and upload this test file. And you can see that it's submitting the text within the file. But right now it looks like it's taking this time to respond. And we can also see that it's submitting it in parts, which is great. Now, if we scroll all the way down, it looks like we have an error. I guess uh, ChatGPT is busy at the moment or feeling overloaded. Uh, let's just refresh this page. Okay, so now I'm just gonna hit the regenerate button and then I'm gonna stop it because I'm not, I don't care about the response right now. Uh, we just wanna make sure that the code that we're using works. So now let's go right back up to the code. So I created a plugin that allows me to inject the code directly into the console just by clicking this injection icon. Um, if any of you are interested on how I created this, just let me know down in the comments and I'll see if I create a video for it. Anyway, so for now, let's just go and copy this code and paste it into the console and hit enter. And now I'm going to submit this test file. And there we have it. It's submitting the file in chunks like we want it to. Okay, great. So now that's done. Um, and I know a couple of you were asking whether or not we can submit prompts before the data submitted. There are a number of ways you can do this. Uh, this is the way I just chose to do it. But next, uh, let's type, I would like to add this line before the data is submitted. Please provide a summary of the content. Okay, so it looks like it provided us with a snippet of the code. So I'm going to ask ChatGPT for the full code. Okay, so there we have it. So I'm going to refresh the page. I'm going to copy the code. Right click, select inspect. Let's go to the console area. Let me clear this and then we're going to paste the code inside the console. Okay, let's hit enter. Okay, there's our button. Let's load up the same test file. So it looks like one of the responses is pretty bad and it's most likely because we're using the same chat to build the code. Um, we're also using it to test the test file. So um, I would recommend that you start a new chat and test it that way. That way you get the proper responses. But anyway, let's scroll up to see if our prompt was submitted before the content. And it looks like it has, so that's working. Now let's just scroll down to see if we can find any more responses and just to also verify that we're seeing the 
prompt right before the data is submitted. So it looks like the second part was also submitted with the prompt before it. I'm just going to hit stop generating because we don't need it to generate so much. Um, and then I'm just going to refresh the page as well. Okay, so let me just scroll back up. Now let's take a look at the response for part two. So it looks like the response for part two was also pretty bad. And it seems the data was submitted, but it cut off mid-sentence. So uh, we're going to have to work on that. Anyway, let's move on and see if we can find something else. So it looks like for part three, it gave us a decent uh, short summary of it and going down to part four it looks like it also provided a summary for it too and i'm sure it did the same thing for part five okay so now let's see if we can apply a quick fix to uh chat cutting off the data mid-sentence i'm just gonna scroll up to where it says part one of test two and i'm just gonna edit it and delete everything that's in it it doesn't matter or you can just simply start typing before cutting the data into chunks, check whether the last character is a period. When splitting the file into chunks, if the last character is a period, the cut is performed directly. However, if the last character is not a period, it splits at the nearest period dot mark. Although this might not work 100% of the time, it would do the job. It was also mentioned by this user here. I'm not going to try to pronounce the name, but thank you. So it looks like it provided partial code. So let's ask for the full code again. All right, looks like it's done. So let's copy the code, refresh the page. Let's start a new chat. Right click, inspect. Now let's paste the code. Hit enter. And now let's just load up our test file. Okay, so now let's take a look at our responses. And it looks like we're getting pretty good results. You can see part two here and you can see it's a pretty lengthy response and scroll down a little more and yeah, it looks like the responses are pretty good. So the last thing we'll talk about is the appearance and how to change the width of the button or anything like that. So let's refresh the page. Let's right click, select inspect, and then we're going to head over to the console window up here and then we're going to paste the code. So what we're going to do is just increase the width of the button that we have here so that it's just not there tucked in the left corner of the screen. So we're just going to copy this line of code here and then we're going to paste it. And then we're going to change where it says margin to the word width. Then change three pixels here to 100%. We could also even change the color of the button style background that you see here from green to any other color. So let's just change this to gray, for instance. Now hit enter. So there we have it. There's our button. The length has been extended to 100%. And the color is gray. Um, and remember, you can edit anything on this script to your liking um, and even add on top of it. Feel free to comment below if you guys have any issues or have any questions or any suggestions. And I hope this video was helpful for those of you that were having issues trying to recreate this script. So thanks for watching. If you like this kind of content, like and subscribe. Till next time.